Hello and welcome to this film which is all about the amides or in other words molecules that contain the amide functional group and just as we have done with all the other functional groups we're going to have a look at what amides look like we're going to try and name some of them or at least we're going to try and name the primary ones and we're going to try and explain some of their physical properties in the way we have done with the other molecules so far and hopefully we'll also know how we can make an amide from molecules that contain other functional groups Right, so first of all, let's have a look at the amide functional group itself. Now, I'm going to focus most of all on primary amides, and that is to say amides which have one carbon attached to the nitrogen. So just like we had primary amines, where one of nitrogen's three bonds was to a carbon atom and the other two were hydrogens, we're primarily interested in the primary amides, and the difference between these and amines is that the carbon next to the nitrogen has a carbon-oxygen double bond. So here is the amide functional group. Okay, and you can see it looks rather a lot like a carboxylic acid functional group, except instead of having OH here, we've got NH2. Now, if we're talking about a primary amide, so that is one where the, there's only one carbon attached to this nitrogen, then the formula will end in CONH2. So C double bond O, NH2. Now you can have things called substituted amides. We don't have to name these, but we do take an interest in some of them when we get a bit further on into the course. And their amides, again, here's this amide functional group. But here we've got these sort of general things, these R groups. And if these two R's, or if at least one of these two R's is not a hydrogen, then this would be called a substituted amide and not a primary amide anymore. And we wouldn't have two H's here anymore. We'd have R's. Okay, so that's what an amide functional group looks like. Let's have a look now at how we might name amides. So here is, again, just to remind you, these are both primary amides, and they're the only ones we need to be able to name. Okay, now this amide here, here's the amide functional group. Okay, the amide in total has two carbons. Now, if this was an alkane with two carbons, we'd call it ethane. The difference between an amide and the alkane is that instead of having the E on the end, it says it has amide on the end. So this molecule here is simply ethanamide. This amide here, which again has this amide functional group, and again it's a primary amide because there's no carbons attached here, just hydrogens. This one here has four carbons, so this one would be called butanamide. Now, clearly the amide functional group could be in different places when we've got substituted amides. The amide functional group would not have to be at the end, but as long as we've got a primary amide, then it's always at the end and we don't have to specify where the amide functional group is. Right, let's have a look at the physical properties of these things. Again, we're not going to have to say what boiling point these things have or whether they're soluble in water or not, but we would be expected to be able to make comparisons between these and other molecules. So if we see here, we've got this carbonyl group that we've seen in a lot of other molecules so far, which makes this molecule polar. But not only do we have that, we've also got this NH2 group. And the nitrogen here has a lone pair, just like this oxygen does, but it also has hydrogens, which are directly attached to a highly electronegative atom. So we can have hydrogen bonding to this group and also from this group, I suppose you could say. Okay, We can form hydrogen bonds here between water molecules and the lone pairs on this oxygen, but we can form hydrogen bonds, I suppose, in two different ways here. We can go from the lone pair of the nitrogen to a hydrogen, or we could go from the lone pair of a oxygen on a water molecule, say, to the hydrogen of this amide group. Okay, so as usual, well, not as usual, but just like we saw with the esters, these things will have higher boiling points and a higher solubility than hydrocarbons of similar molecular weight, but these will be even higher in their boiling points and even more soluble in water than esters because of this ability to hydrogen bond. Okay, now if we wanted to make an amide, and this becomes quite important when we look at the polymerization section of the course and when we look at proteins, we need to think about what it is that we 
um, can I suppose what what the amide looks like it's made out of. Okay, so just as when we had an ester, we thought to ourselves, well, this bit looks a little bit like a carboxylic acid that's lost its OH group, and if this was an ester, this was an OH group over here, and it looked a bit like. Um, an alcohol that lost its hydrogen. Well, if we put back a hydrogen here, and if we reinserted an OH into this part, then again we'd see we'd have a carboxylic acid, and here we'd have an amine. Now remember, we're only interested in strictly in naming primary amides, so we'd only be able to make this from a primary amine. But if you had carbon containing groups in these R's here, then you'd be able to make your amide, or substituted amide, from, say, a secondary amine or a tertiary amine. Okay? But the point is here, I suppose, the point that we're trying to make here in this slide, is that if you remove water, so again, if you have a condensation reaction, then you'll be able to join together a molecule that has this NH at the end with a molecule that has a carboxylic acid at the end of it, and you'll be able to make an amide and you'll produce water as a byproduct. Okay, so um, just to recap, hopefully the things that you have learned now are what an amide functional group looks like and how we name them up to eight carbons. We didn't go right up to eight, but the prefixes are just the same as for the alkanes. And we've looked at the usual physical properties, and we've also seen what molecules we need to make an amide. Hopefully it all makes sense. Um, if you've got any questions to ask or if you've got any comments to make, then please feel free to come and see me or to post a comment on YouTube.